obnoxious boss. And you know, hey, be careful. You might get a, 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 a DD call. And, Hi, guys. Thanks for joining. This it's is not, it's not yet there. It was. No, no, it is. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining. This is Amanda Armagost at Essence. I'm going to start over. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thanks for joining. This is Essence of History. Today, we're going to be talking about St. Patrick's Day. My name is Amanda Armagost. My name is Lilissa Hopper. And I'm Dr. Bossy for Essence. Thanks for joining. So, what do you know about St. Patrick's Day? That people get drunk and I have to fix them in the ER. That's all I know about them. <laughs> Well, as you uh, mentioned, alcohol kind of is a big thing that's tied to St. Patrick's Day. Actually, there is a 10% increase in DUIs on St. Patrick's Day alone. And that translates in more accidents and that translates, we hate all these holidays in the ER. I know. No, the ER is not a place to be as an employee on a holiday. <laughs> on the holidays. You can be busy. And the, the first, my first uh, call, was 4th of July, 2002. And that was a 36 hours nonstop terror and horror. And uh, I can imagine St. Patrick's Day and some other holidays are very close to that. Oh, for sure. Especially St. Patrick's Day is known for drinking. Very How you're, much... requi you're required to drink Irish, right? Yes, yes, you have to. Alyssa, do you know how much alcohol is consumed during St. Patrick's Day? Oh, gosh. A lot? <laughs> I'd say millions. Millions? Millions yeah. of what? Millions of pints. We're pints. pints. Okay. Well, I, I, I think it's more than that, millions of pints, because considering, you know, how many people are celebrating that. So where, where is celebrated? Where is the St. Patrick's Day celebrated? Well, the first um, St. Patrick's Day celebration, where do you think it was? Well, I know it's an Irish holiday. But many of these things, actually, they didn't come from Ireland. They came from um, mainland Europe because that was where the, all the saints uh, came from, the ca in Catholic, Catholic kind of realm. And it must have been, this is just on me deducting, it must have been before 15th century because uh, at that time, England was a Catholic country. Mm -hmm. And it was the marriage uh, problem of Henry the Sixth, I believe, or Fourteen. I don't know. I don't know those numbers that uh, made them accept the, the, the Protestant kind of belief. Mm -hmm. Because in Catholic belief, he couldn't divorce his wife, and so he had to convert to another whole other religion to get rid rid of the first wife. By the way, he killed most of his wives, but. More or less, so, so it has to be an old... Did we establish what your guess is for which country had the first celebration of St. Patrick's Day? England? Well, you're actually on... You yes. are you are on to something <laughs> because St. Patrick was from England. He was. Mm -hmm. And he actually didn't really go to Ireland on good and positive terms. He was oh. kidnapped. Wow. Yeah, he was... St. Patrick was kidnapped from England. What year? He was 16 years old. Yeah, he was young. So. Oh, yeah. I heard he was a slave for a mm -hmm. while. Yep. He was a slave oh. and a shepherd for six years. Yep. But then he, yeah, he was kidnapped by pirates, brought to Ireland to work there as a slave. And then he escaped by walking 200 miles to a port and then going back to England. Oh, so he was there just to do free work and then went back? Well, he didn't just go back. He had to escape back. Oh, uh, yeah. He wasn't brought oh back. Poor guy. Yeah. So, um, and and the Irish are celebrating the enslavement of St. Patrick? Well, that's where we get kind of the alcohol side of things. Oh. As you know, what other holiday is kind of going on right now? Do you know? Right now? Mm -hmm. We are currently a Catholic. Yeah, we are currently in the Lenten season, which uh. is that period before Easter. Can you explain Lent a little bit, Alyssa? Or well, like just... Don't go into well, it, you know. So basically the general idea of what we need to understand for this podcast is like the idea of Lent is, you know, you sacrifice the same way, you know, Jesus did on the cross, which is kind of the history of Easter. So it's kind of known to give something up during these like four weeks of Lent. It's common to give up sugars, candies, things that you 
would struggle to give up on a daily basis. You eat only lentils? No, (laughs) it's just called Lent. Lent. But back in the day, they still had Lent, but they were not allowed to drink alcohol. What's Lent? That's what it's called. The period before Easter. It's called the Lenten season. Oh, So it's about four weeks before Easter. You were not allowed to drink alcohol. It was, it's, it's less demanding now, but Lent is still celebrated all across Christianity. Um, But the biggest thing was in Ireland, they could not drink during Lent, except for St. Patrick's Day. Wow. So So you have to catch up one one day during this whole period, it was legal for them to drink alcohol. And that's why we get this big old association of alcohol with St. Patrick's Day. Because as you can imagine, then they went all the way. They went all the way. That was crazy. Yeah, that's interesting. And that that makes uh, as well as understand a little background mm-hmm. to the whole process that they couldn't drink. So the only day they could drink, obviously, they overdid it a little. A little. Yeah. So Amanda, do you know how they got St. Patrick's Day? How they decided what day was going to be no, St. But- Patrick's Day? I want to know how St. Patrick became St. Patrick's to start with. What sanctifies him? What did he do that was so out of ordinary to make him a sin? Well, St. Patrick brought Catholicism to Ireland when he went back. Oh, after, so he went back again. Yeah, after he so escaped. He's asking for trouble. Yeah, he did go back <laughs> after he escaped and he brought Catholicism to Ireland. Okay. Basically, that's kind of what I had gotten the understanding of, too. And this is that was his sanctum. That was the sanctum. That's how he got became the saint. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so he continued. So um, he, he uh, with 16, he's kidnapped, he's a slave, he escapes back. And then obviously the, he sort of uh, spent his life. For religious uh, purposes, purposes yeah, and so exactly. On. And when he was there, Ireland was really dangerous. There was like a lot of Ireland's still dangerous, <laughs> like a lot of warlords and fighting uh-huh. going on. And I think St. Patrick's Day is on March 17th because that's the day he passed away, correct? Yep, oh, okay. So they celebrate his passing, which just happens to be during the time that they couldn't actually celebrate, which is yeah. where they gave. Most of the saints they were, you know, killed. Was he killed? Was he a martyr? Martyr, or how do you? Do we know even? I didn't or, find that. I found that he died in 461. So, so yeah, long, long, time. long time ago. So yeah. I would assume probably at a younger age. Yeah, yeah, our investigator Charlie, he was doing some research on St. Patrick's Day, but because it's so old, there's not as much written yeah, information. Makes sense. And as you can see, they kind of grasped at strings to create mm-hmm. yeah a bigger Talk, holiday <laughs> talking about the, the documentation and so on when do you think the first uh, new testament was written what year one no so probably i don't know guess what i'm gonna, I'm gonna say it was written in the 1800s no, no, it was written much. Like, no, the see, like one Bible, Bible it was Bible was a, a, a Old Testament and New Testament, and each of them there were many many books. Many, eventually they decided which one makes the official, you know, the Bible cut. and so on. But the first written thing about it, like the the first uh, 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 four books of the um, New Te- New Testament are the the. Uh, Practically, uh, those books are considered the evangelium, right? If, uh, the gospels. The gospels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you know which, uh, what year the first one was written? Any, any guess? Twelve hundred. No, actually, the uh, hundred twenty. Oh, see, I was really close. The first mention. Zero. The first mention of Jesus was in seventy, after what we consider. 70 uh, uh, AC, hmm. okay? But so I can imagine that documentation was not a big thing in 400. Mm-hmm. And that is actually the time that the Dark Ages started. So that was the time you would burn the books to get warm. So at the Dark Ages, have you heard of the Dark Ages? I haven't. No? 
Do you know what dark ages are? I've heard are? of the dark ages, but I'm not so no, after, educated on it. Yeah, after fall of the Roman Empire, practically it was chaos because no matter how brutal Roman were, they brought a uh, structure and law across the nations. Whereas after they fell apart around the same time, um, uh, that all these little places, they had their own rules and so on, and it was chaos. And it was uh, then their uh, religious fanatism took over. And then that's where lots of books were lost, actually. Mm. As a matter of fact, there's a important information that before that, the Arabs, they translated most of the antique work from Latin to Arabic. And most mm. of the things we consider antique books these are actually the translation from the Arabic because the original were all lost. Hmm. So 40, 400 was not a good time for documentation, science, and history because uh, that is when everybody killed everybody and we burned the book to just to stay warm. Yeah, they were focusing on other things than yeah. writing books. And, and reading books yeah. I, as well. Yeah, they had bigger fish to fry. Yeah. Well, I have a question for you guys. To get kind of on a St. Patrick's Day, what color do we associate with St. Patrick? Oh, I have so, watched so many TikToks that are putting color in the Chicago River. So I know I, that. Yeah, Alyssa and I were just talking about that. <laughs> okay, so so we can agree that green, green <laughs> is the color that we think of. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't always green, which well, I was quite interested. Being that green is in the Ireland's flag, I thought, well, obviously. But do you know what color it was before 1798? I just recently found out, but I'm sure you're going to tell us and why. Yeah, I know. What, I know it was blue. It was blue. But I don't know why it was blue. Well, for the same reason that you kind of explained why St. Patrick's was back in England. England had some sort of control over Ireland. Mm -hmm. And as we know, England's flag is blue. And that's how we got the mm. correlation until 1798 when Ireland had its rebellion and they decided we didn't want any affiliation. We're taking green. And that's when we got the association of green Ireland and St. Patrick's day mm. before it was blue. Mm. So do you know why it's green? Why they chose green? I don't other than. Well, either Ireland is very green country. Ireland Lots of very green. Yeah. And I know that this I don't think that this is why they chose green. This was definitely far after the thing, but Ireland is known for their potato famine. But that was 1800. And when people were past, when people were starving from the potato famine, they actually were resorting to eating grass. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, cool. so yeah. So they were eating grass and obviously dying of starvation. And when people would find these deceased individuals, their mouths were actually green mm. from eating the grass. That, wow. That's quite a story. Yeah. Miranda. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really sad story. Yeah. I have heard that potatoes are quite common in Ireland. But... Yeah. But the, I mean, obviously, potato is not a natural uh, the, um, uh, plant in Europe. They brought it from new world from Americas. Mm. But then in many, many countries, potato became the staple food. And the, one of the problem with the potato is that they grow only one kind of. Now, like in Americas, you have thousand variation of potatoes. Whereas they in Europe, they have just one variation. And if there is a, a pest or something, it can annihilate uh, all the thing so yeah that uh, that uh, actually that was a very big deal because they stopped everything else and they relied only on this potato because it was growing it was growing everywhere until it wasn't mm -hmm. yeah and they yeah. also aren't really the best source of nutrients potatoes they have it's, some but it is starch there's... mostly starch and the best part of the potato is actually the skin. The skin. Yeah, the part and people don't eat. The part that the people take. Exactly Which is, the, it's the same for almost all vegetables. The yep. most nutrient part yep. is on the skin. So, um, yeah, so they had to eat grass, and that wasn't enough, and they would die. So, but why would they choose that? The color that the death. No, that was way after. Yeah, that was way after. Yeah. Ireland is also closely associated, and St. Patrick's Day with shamrocks. Yeah, absolutely. Which 
I have a little interesting fact about mm -hmm. shamrocks. Um, the biggest difference, at least for me, was shamrocks and four leaf clovers. Mm -hmm. To me, I thought they were the same thing. I was unaware that they are completely different things. The shamrock only has three leaves at all times. This is what would be we consider as the three leaf clover. That is the ordinary clover, which is why we have that association with St. Patrick's Day, because you would see it everywhere. Then we got some sort of mutation somewhere down the line, and we were starting to see four-leaf clovers. Well, do you know how common a four-leaf clover is? Mm, you tell me. One in every 10,000 wow. three-leaf clovers will become a four-leaf clover. So well, no, I'm just uh, questioning why it's so rare. You know, I it don't. It must be a disadvantage to be four-leaf clover than three-leaf clover. That's, you know, that's what we see with evolution mm -hmm. and what we know about how we develop and adapt, mm -hmm. but I'm not entirely sure. What I do know is because of its rarity, it was seen as a sign of good luck. Except for the clover. I, yeah, except for the poor clover. Yeah, unless you are the clover. <laughs> it's not a good thing. But from shamrocks, we did get McDonald's shamrock shakes. True. Which only come out in March. So is it green? It is green. Mm, okay. So what else? So sh about shamrocks are associated with St. Patrick and St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick is a Catholic holiday. Oh, oh, sure. Yeah. And sh we know shamrocks are three. So it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what St. Patrick used to show the about. Trinity. So yeah, in the, the Trinity. if there's four, who's the fourth if it's the four? It's a mutation. It's, well, yeah. It's just it, you're just lucky. One yeah. one in ten thousand yeah. or one in a million if you close your eyes. Wow. That's a lot of history just packed. Isn't it Patrick. crazy? Now that, that uh, this is going to sound so dumb. Um has any of that anything to do with uh with um with leprechaun and so on? <laughs> Am I mixing two different no St. Patrick's Day and Leprechauns are you're absolutely not mixing it up. No. But I think a lot of it comes in what we, you know, correlation. You know, with Santa Claus, mm -hmm. we came up with someone to believe in, mm -hmm. someone to associate, just like the Easter bunny and Easter. It was kind of my understanding, their way of having someone to represent St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. And it's a leprechaun. And it's a leprechaun. Okay. Is leprechaun a good or a bad player? Well, leprechaun is like a like a, a joker a jokester yeah a jokester. i remember so he's not evil no no, no? he's not evil but maybe he's not mischievous good. mischievous mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I remember in like kindergarten leprechauns used to come on saint patrick's day to my classroom and like dye things green and put coins around yeah and I, I told Alyssa. Alyssa mm -hmm. mentioned about pinching it's like a common thing in the u.s if you don't wear green on saint patrick's day you get pinched really not here. I totally check out my TikTok. Pinched. Okay. I would love, I'll explain because actually we work with a man named Charlie upstairs who hadn't heard of this either, but Amanda and I had both heard of this. So supposedly somewhere going down life, there is a saying that if you don't wear green on St. Patrick's day, you, people are allowed to pinch you. Oh, in, in Germany, there's something similar, but it's not pinching that in certain time, like uh, fashion, they call it that the woman can cut the tie of the man. So men always have a the, the tie they want to get rid of because if you walk on the street, they just assault you and cut your ties. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But not but actually it's around the same time. Yeah, the time of it is around the same time. But this is as obviously in Germany, nothing to do with St. Patrick's Day. Well, I would say nothing. Like we know, you know, Ireland is also in Europe, mm -hmm. like Germany. But did you know it was actually the Spanish people who started the first celebration in America? It was in St. Augustine in Florida, a Spanish colony. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So, so it was actually the Spanish Europeans who decided that, hey, we're going to celebrate this man. You mean Maybe drinking. You celebrate can, drinking. You can say that. I will say celebrate the man yeah. that they thought were celebrating. But let's go yeah. back to pinching. So why what why is that a thing well before i explain what i learned pinching is never okay guys 
No one yeah, can write pick me. from me. Yeah, <laughs> but you can see. the whole point was, you know, as we know, leprechauns, they're shorter. They're a little undersized. So as we call them, little man syndrome. So they might be a little more angry, but they supposedly had in their folklore, they like to pinch. That the leprechaun like the to leprechauns pinch. like to pinch. And if and, you. Yeah, go ahead. And the saying was leprechauns could not see green. Green made you invisible. Nice. And I so see. I see. It's coming together. On St. Patrick's together. Day. Yeah. You would not get pinched because oh. they could not see. No, in reality, some uh, other people would go and pinch somebody. They who doesn't... still do that. Okay. Like right now, I think Amanda has the no, right you're to safe. Pinch you. You're safe. I made it very clear. If anyone pinches <sighs> me, I'm going to be really mad. So I'm not going to pinch you. Okay. Now, <laughs> What's that about gold and the leprechaun? What what what's going on? What's the story behind that? Why leprechaun love gold so much? I mean, I don't know the actual answer, but is There's it not theories. for obvious reasons? Like yeah. you and I liking gold, like the gold at the end of the rainbow. Have you ever heard that? No. <gasps> Have you heard that? Yes, okay, I've like, heard. Okay, that. good. Like at the end of the rainbow, there's each a end is supposed gold. to have a pot of gold. That the oh. leprechaun swatch. Oh, okay, okay. I think gold obviously is just of value. And I have the feeling that, like I said before, on St. Patrick's Day, leprechauns like to be like a little bit mischievous, mischievous and then they hide gold coins. It's just something for gold. the kids. Yeah. They hide the gold coins. Oh, there's a good story there. Some of the surgeries I do, these screws, they come in gold color. And the top part, there's small little tabs I break. Uh, once uh, my my son, who is now 15, we were in our lake house. I just throw those things in the water. I said, you know, I saw a leprechaun coming. He was five years or something. And then he got into the water for hours. He was looking for those little tabs. For those gold. I told him it's real gold. Yeah. So I think I see the effect of that on children mm -hmm. and how to entertain this magical thinking about how to keep them entertained. It's actually a beautiful holiday because I saw how excited my son was for hours looking for these little golden taps yeah. and so on in the water and just, uh, you know, that, that, that just uh, being entertained. Yeah, and at the yeah. end of the day, that's what most holidays are. It's just yeah. something for the kids. Yeah, well, uh, what, what else do we need to know now about St. Patrick's Day? Which well, I think we should maybe just touch a little bit about the Americanized version mm -hmm. of St. Patrick's Day. Like we know kind of how it got brought here, mm -hmm. but how do we, how is it celebrated today? Like what have we done to kind of make it a holiday? Because just like Valentine's Day, it's it's named after a saint. It's another religious based holiday. Yeah, it's def I think it's definitely less commercialized than Valentine's Day is. Mm -hmm. I noticed when I go to go to Target, this is the same example I had for Valentine's Day. It's not all St. Patrick's Day stuff. It's actually mostly Easter. Mm -hmm. So St. Patrick's Day is less Americanized and commercialized than other holidays. But of course, we still do it. We dump 40 pounds of vegetable dye in the Chicago River. 40 pounds doesn't sound a lot. Is it, or You've is it seen a, those videos. They make yeah. that whole river green. I hope this is the last. I know people love that, but I hope this is the last year that we do that. It's really wasteful and a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> a little? How, how, do fish, how, how do fish like it? No one cares about the fish. No one cares about how the planet feels about our little St. Patrick's Day celebration, Green <laughs> River, as long as they get their green beer, which is a thing. Green beer. Did you know that? No. They will put food dye in a lot of alcohol tonight. I'm learning a, a lot. lot tonight. They don't make anything green. Pickled beers, they'll throw pickles, olives, all those extra green things that could be wow. thrown in beers. They'll be in there tonight. I guarantee you. Yeah, not at my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm safe as well. So we wanted to find a little bit of dirty history about St. Patrick's Day, but we actually unfortunately couldn't. Really? Yeah, the worst or like craziest, darkest thing we found happened in Boston. You, re you remember we talked about that a little bit. Oh, it was the a robbery. Yeah, the yeah. largest private oh. property theft in American history. Oh, that, that art the robbery. The well, I know the art. yeah at the Gardner Museum. Yep, mm. mm -hmm. culprits never found. Maybe they were leprechauns. 
Do you know how much money that they lost in total? Oh, well, I guess worth of merchandise, at least probably billion. Yeah, yeah. almost. I mean, yeah. 300 million. That's pretty close. Yeah, that's enough for me. Well, I have heard that they have those uh, those paintings. They still have the framing still on the walls, empty framing as a sign of what it was lost to the museum. Memorial kind as of. As a memorial kind of things. But, you know, that's kind of a, that, excuse my French, but that's a, um, a D-I-C-K uh, move. Yeah. You know, t- stealing art, something that is a legacy of our culture, stealing that and then putting in a back room so some probably so some, never found again. some 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 rich person you know these kind of robberies are always their commission somebody says i want that i give you that much money you go and get that and that is probably in some private house in a dark room that um, that only one or two people just go there every six months and just look at it that's the Thickest move somebody can do. Yeah, it really takes away the appreciation for the work that the yeah. artists did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe we still find them. Yeah, maybe we'll still find them. Maybe the St. Patrick's Day I don't know. They said 26 life. years later and they have no leads. So that was just 26 years ago? That's that's what I found. Oh, okay. That wasn't that long ago. So we had all the like FBI and so on. FBI, if you're listening, <laughs> where are you? What are you doing? Get on it. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Do you think alcohol was involved in the robbery, even though no. you think it was commission based? No way. No, no you know, Maybe those after. those those <laughs> those those thieves are professionals. Yeah. Otherwise, they would have gotten caught. I know. Yeah. You're so, right. And professional thieves are like <laughs> professional doctors. You're probably they don't drink right. and work. I'd be interested to know what other heists they pulled off, actually. You know, because if they got away with this, I'm sure they've done others and gotten away with them. I assume, and this might be my own fault for assuming this, but when alcohol is involved in most cases, I assume things go poorly. So when you had a holiday that emphasizes so much, you know, intoxication, I got to imagine that the robberies in general are up. Mm-hmm. or oh, you know sure. a, a crime in general things that people yeah. wouldn't normally do sober Violent but maybe crime. we would do mm-hmm. yeah exactly even no. if it was little things you know punching people mm-hmm. yeah. they, they educate me a little saint patrick's day is not the actual federal or state holiday is it no it's not a federal holiday it, it is a it yeah, is a holiday not. but it's not like we take time off correct is it always weekends or is it no it's always the 17th of march Always 17th of March. So most of people have to work next day or most of the time. Mm-hmm, correct. So that is maybe why it didn't caught up with the rest of the thing, because people have to work next day and they cannot celebrate like maybe some other holidays. What do you think? Have you heard, I that's a silly question if I've asked you about asked you if you've heard of Oktoberfest. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. But- the way I've heard St. Patrick's Day described mm-hmm. is it's like a mini Oktoberfest where on the weekend, whether before or after St. Patrick's Day, they'll do their pub crawls. They'll yeah. do their full celebration. You know, for us, it's not just one day. It's an opportunity to exploit it. Yeah. 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 That's a good point because the biggest drinking day of the year is the day before Thanksgiving. Right. Mm. And people have that day off. So is it? I didn't know that. That's interesting. That that that's interesting fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense though because then it's a Thanksgiving, and then uh, you are not you are not driving, and then it's a Friday, then it's a weekend. You have four days to recover. (laughs) Not enough. And I mean, there's other reasons too. Like a lot of people are sad on on Thanksgiving and stuff. Oh yeah. Well, um, but as well, uh, you know, most of the time. People, people are, are in town. Going yeah, people mm-hmm. are in town to see their family and they're catching up yeah. with like friends and stuff. So that being said, I hope all of you guys take it easy the St. Patrick's Day. Don't overdo it. Except Care. Amanda and the friends. They have a party. You're all invited. You're there's no St. Patrick's Day theme to this party. No green. Actually, there's a green ban on the party. Okay. Grab your pinchers. Who, yeah. Who want to come with me? Go and, you know, in the front of Amanda's house and just uh, wait to be let in. Torment. It's a cold night. I don't recommend that. I think right now it's 10 degrees out. They say alcohol warms the body. 
Yeah, the uh, alcohol is inside. These people are outside. So. Okay. I have, Amanda's parties are legendary. Okay. So everyone protect your liver and be safe. Do not drink and drive. Thank you. Yes. Well, a lifetime of Ubers costs less than a DUI. So what is that true? Or yeah, are you just making that up? No, there's people that have actually done the math. A lifetime of Ubers. If you, oh, if you need it, like when you go party when you go so. drinking, costs yeah. less than the price of a DUI. Oh. So keep that in mind. Do not drink and drive and have a safe night. An accident as well uh, uh, will be uh, uh, very poor to your health. And don't, then ER bill. Yeah. 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 Don't come visit these two in the ER. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Amanda Armagost. I'm Melissa Haber. And I'm Dr. Abbasi for Essence. Be safe.